for a song. Oh, you do that. So welcome the people. Are they recording us now? Huh? You're recording now? They cannot be my father never since I sit down here. What? Then I will get up and turn your Good evening. <laughs> it's another Friday. Sabbath. Another Sabbath. And it's also what's it? The second to last? Not the last. Friday of the month. The last Friday of the month. Is it? Is it the last Second Friday? Second to last. It's a Friday in the month. <laughs> it is a Friday. We have one more to go. The last day in the month of June is a Friday. Very good. Just as I thought. <laughs> We said happy Sabbath, we just say welcome, you know, <laughs> good evening, but happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Ashley's space has been invaded. <laughs> Anyways, beauties, as per usual, we are going to worship with you guys this evening. And as you know, before we begin any worship, we are going to pray. I'm going to ask Abby to pray for us this evening. And then we will jump right into our song service. So let us pray. Our kind of most compassionate Father, Lord, we, your children, come before you this Sabbath day, giving you thanks for bringing us to the end of another tiring week. Um, yeah, you know, it was a rough week, but you saw us through it, and you give us gave us the opportunity to know we were to sit and rest and worship together. And I pray that as we go through this worship session, that we will leave here feeling rejuvenated and having some sort of renewed purpose as we go about our Christian journey. We thank you and we look forward to your continuous mercies and blessings towards us in your holy name. I pray. Amen. 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 And as you all know, I go to the comments to find the songs that we're going to sing each Sabbath. And so this evening, the song of choice is hymn number 442. How sweet are the tidings that greets the pilgrim's air as we wander in exile from home. We'll go after two. One, two. How sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrim's air as he wanders in exile from home. Soon, soon will the Savior in glory appear, and soon will the kingdom come. He is coming, coming, is coming soon, I know. He's coming back, coming back to this earth again. Hallelujah. And the weary pilgrims will to go. Savior comes to reign. The mossy old graves where the pilgrims sleep shall be opened as wide as before. And the millions that sleep in the mighty deep shall live on this earth once more. He is coming, coming coming soon i know he's coming, coming back to this earth again Hallelujah. and the weary pilgrims will to glory go when the savior comes to reign there will meet near to part in a happy eden home sweet songs of Redemption will sing from the north, from the south, all the ransom shall come and worship our heavenly King. He's coming, coming, he's coming soon, I know. He's coming. 
coming back to this earth again. Oh, and the weary pilgrims will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah again. Soon if faithful we all shall be there. Oh, be watchful, be hopeful, be joyful till then, and a crown of bright glory we'll wear. He's coming, coming, he's coming soon, I know. He's coming back to this earth again. And the weary pilgrims will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. Amen. 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 We're not singing anymore? No. Really? You want to sing another one? Yes. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't go on your favorite. 388, is it? 388. Okay. Don't forget the Sabbath. Okay. Two, three, ten. Don't forget the Sabbath, the Lord our God has blessed. Of all the weak, the brightest, of all the weak, the best. It brings repose from labor, it tells of joy divine. Its beams of light descending with heavenly beauty shine. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath holy and worship Him today. Who said to His disciples, I am the living way. And if we meekly follow or send our hair below, of the fountain whose streams eternal flow. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Day of sacred pleasure, its golden oils will spend. In thankful hymns to Jesus, the children's there as friend. Oh, gentle, loving Savior, how good and kind thou art. How precious is thy promise to dwell in every heart. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Amen. Amen. So I've been tasked with this. <laughs> it feels that way. Easy responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, easy responsibility. Well, I've been tasked to lead out in some kind of way with this evening's worship session and the reason is as i listened over the past two three two. um two last sessions that ashley had and with um leon talking about the young people of the church leadership etc and its impact on our youth i was moved you see in 20 I think it was in 2019 or 2018 I'm not sure right now we visited Germany we being my youth director at the time Pastor Gordon Lindsay and myself visit Germany for the global youth um, Congress that was being held there and I left there impacted and 
empowered by the use of the theme at the time, pass it on. And our youth director, GC youth director at the time, Gary Blanchard, he spoke about the importance of passing on leadership, um, passing on mission, you know? Um, he spoke about the fact that leadership in the church is intergenerational. It's not top down, yeah? It's not the, the older folks in the church leading and the younger people just submitting, you know, and having nothing to contribute. And I think that's, that's not how it is or that's not how it should be? It shouldn't be that way. You know, it should not be that way. And that is what I want to look at this evening. I want to look at the fact that um, leadership is about team ministry. Um, intergenerational leadership is what I call it. Huh? Teamwork. Yes, teamwork. <laughs> teamwork. And so the first question I asked is, what examples of mentorship? Because that's what it really is. Intergenerational leadership for me is the two, um, what do you call it now? two extremes of age group the older folks and the younger folks coming together and working together to to lead god's church right so my question is what examples of mentorship can you identify in scripture because that's really what it was um what it is this mentorship is intergenerational was it Joshua. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Moses and Joshua. Mm -hmm. Moses and Joshua. We could think of others too. There is the Elijah. The first thing that came to my mind was Jesus and the 12 disciples. There you go. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> were, Perfect. They, were they young? Disciples were younger than Jesus? Yeah. Oh. Or I, Jesus I was younger than disciples? disciples. He was younger than the disciples? Was he? Either way, it's still two different generations, you, you know. know. You know the young he, people can only have the old people sometimes. You know, when you say exactly, because when, when mom said just now of the older um, folks working with the younger folks to um, lead, I was saying, so why can't the younger for folks work with that? Learn, make it learn from way. the older folks. No, well, like all the older folks, folks learn, learn from, from the young And folks. that can happen. That's yes. not a no, no. That is definitely, and in this generation, you know, where we're all technological and social media, and uh, the old people like me have a lot to learn from the younger folks. But yes, you did and mention one great some. example of that in the Bible is David. David. He was the youngest of his 12 brothers. Mm -hmm. And he taught when them a he lot. He became of the king over the older ones, and he taught them a lot about leadership and about trusting in God and being an effective mm -hmm. leader. Great. So well, I didn't have David there. Leaders. I didn't have David in there as well. And I had Elijah and Elisha. Mm -hmm. um, another good example. But this evening, I want us to focus on the one that Abigail mentioned first. The one Moses and Joshua. Moses and Joshua. So, Moses mentored Joshua. Moses, throughout his time walking with Joshua, supported him. He empowered him, he encouraged him, and he taught him a lot of things. And the text I wanted to read is Deuteronomy 34, verse 9, to show how impactful Moses' influence, leadership, was on Joshua. Not influence, though. Deuteronomy 34, 9. Yes. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him, so the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. So here we find that um, the way Moses led was so um, influential and had such a great impact on Joshua that the people of Israel were willing to listen to Joshua. Right? Because of Moses' influence on Joshua's life, Moses made or contributed to Joshua's leadership so much that the people of Israel had confidence in Joshua. Remember they didn't they, question him. They didn't yes, question him. Yes. And they knew that Moses was a good leader. And here's a young man that Moses had mentored. Moses and so they go behind him, Joshua back and go whisper, whisper around the church, ma. So, say, well, you know, Abigail, you have to go there. You have to make it real. <laughs> yes, but that is not leadership. If you are doing that, that's not leadership. Mm -hmm. So the same 
There's a statement that I came across. It says that Alexander the Great took the army his father Philip had meticulously trained and organized, and with it, he conquered the world. That's Alexander the Great. And Joshua, who faithfully followed Moses for 40 years as his assistant before he could become one of Israel's greatest leaders. It's one and the same. Joshua faithfully followed, and he faithfully followed as an assistant, but he wasn't just walking behind Moses and not seeing anything. Moses was leading from the front. And the thing is, they say that a good leader is and must be a good follower. Did you know that? Because what that person does is run, gradually move up, move up until he himself or she herself becomes a follower, a leader. So a good leader is also and, a good um, follower. What came to mind is the fact that if Joshua is following Moses for 40 years, I don't think it's a case where Joshua was just there sitting yeah, and observing. Not at all. He had to be given some opportunity to, to do that's things it. And so that he could learn practically what it, it meant. And as you lead. read through the various examples in scripture with Moses' leadership and Joshua, you'll see that Joshua wasn't just holding his hand and watching the boss. You know, and Moses the wasn't boss. just dictating to him and saying, do this and do that. And, and, and then anything I say, you must do it. And if you're not doing it my way, then it can't. Can Those, ask questions. Yes, and, and he can't. Uh, Moses was not doing that. Moses was mentoring Joshua. But the question I ask here is, was Moses a perfect person? Mm -hmm. So are leaders perfect? No. 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 Are followers perfect? Mm -hmm. No. We all make mistakes. And as we go through scripture, it shows that Moses, though he was such an impactful mentor, was not perfect. And scripture has some examples that I have here. Um, Moses was not the easiest person to assist. Right? <laughs> Moses, Moses was very poor at delegation. Can you tell me why? Any example? His father, his father-in-law, there you go. Had to come and the perfect say to him Exodus that. eighteen. The divide, I ended yes. up to divide up the people mm. into there you into go. tribes. Yeah. So Moses was not a perfect leader. Moses loved hog up things, and he was stressing out himself. Him That's another one. I'm gonna get there. He was stressed <laughs> out himself. <laughs> stress out himself so much so that his poor father and I saw him going to kill off himself and said, "Listen." Him stress on himself, how the people him stress him? Well, they were stressing him too, but he, the fact is that Moses did not acknowledge that he had gifted and talented people right there among him, right there around him. That the no, work of say, leadership was not that for him all. alone. Remember that God called Moses. God mm. talked to Moses in the burning bush. God never come and say, I call all of you. No, so the but church I, was on, but God, built on Moses. <laughs> was Moses' and church. I'm there with you. No, Moses was going on the job. <laughs> Moses' not, life, Moses spent 40 years out there. As a shepherd, he never had anybody to delegate. As a shepherd, he had sole responsibility for the sheep that's what he knew but god, and god gave him that experience first because of what he was going to encounter with the children of israel yeah, sheep yeah. not either for easy for lead. Right, but he was he never had no joshua help him mm -hmm. so he, he never alone was practicing in charge. delegation so, so he when was he used to be the, the people, only one he came with the same mentality mentality of ah gotcha 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 so 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 moses was not good at delegation and Moses could not always handle the opposing opinions of others. And we remember what happened when the 12 spies were sent to Canaan to spot out the land. And then the 10 of them came back with this negative, negative report. And so poor Moses got so stressed, stressed out. out. Yes, he had to go to God <laughs> and ask God for help. And God was so Isn't angry. that his face for me? Like, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which part is just stressed out? Yes, stressed out. Yes, Listen, can't see him when, stressed when out. When Joshua decided to speak up, the people literally wanted to stone Joshua, you know. Yes. And God was very upset. And why you think? Why you think they did not make it into the promised land? Because of their behavior, it's and obedient. God yeah, and Moses not. had to beg God for them, and God said, "Okay, so I'm not going to take them out now." Bam! Mm -hmm. But none of them going to make it into the promised land, you know. And and as you said last time, it took them how much more time for them to to make it into Canaan. And so Moses also, I think Abigail said, was susceptible. He had a poor temper. 
and we know this um one of the examples that um when moses was coming up you remember moses was coming up the the, the that's right when moses and joshua went up into the mountain and god was telling him everything drop it so you fling it up <laughs> <laughs> See, so that he proved the point that he has. And must stop You rebels. There you go. Make one of them in front of the stick. No, but that is it. The point I'm making is that as good, and we know that Moses was one of the best leaders in Scripture that Scripture spoke about. Yet, my point, he was not perfect. perfect. He was not perfect. He made many mistakes. But the, 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 the thing here says that in spite of this, Joshua, in scripture, you don't find any record of Joshua complaining about the fact that Moses wasn't a perfect man. And I want to make that point because sometimes in churches or wherever else, we focus on the fact that these, these leaders over us um, behave as if, them know it all and they are perfect and sometimes in, in, in looking at that imperfect side of them we overlook the fact that they are actually good leaders that some of them are doing good job yeah they are really trying and a member say Israel not easy, easy for lead Israel hard for lead and some of these based on your leadership style sometimes you choose more of the autocratic style most times you know, and you forget that there is the other, there are the other styles that you can use to manage your people that you're, you have been asked to lead. And so Joshua, though, didn't complain about that. Instead, he defended his leader's honor and his reputation. This is a quotation that I came across um, in a book. So, <laughs> I forget the name. Of the book, no? <laughs> which, which reference that? Is that is that is mm -hmm. this guy named Blackaby mm -hmm. and um H Blackaby? Same one. Yes, they wrote this book. All right. So Joshua's experience in working with Moses suggests some things about him, um, about Joshua. So Joshua had a good attitude. And as young people, it's something we need to ask God to help us with. Because the truth is, those who lead us are not always best in their approach. approach, you know. But how we respond will make all the difference. A soft you know, answer, a soft away, answer, yeah. turn it away, right? Joshua wasn't about proving to Moses that he was smarter than him. And that he can come up with better ideas about leadership. He wasn't about competing with Moses. And sometimes we have to just ask the Lord to help us to be humble. Don't, don't be arrogant like that arrogant leader that is offending us. You know, we have to ask God to make us humble. Sometimes we have to just bite the tongue. But what to do? If in your humblest state, the person is still just not trampling. Right. As I was to say, how do we on. how do we find the, the line between being assertive and usually when you're you're being assertive you try to be respectful. Mm -hmm. So be, the line Assertion between be, between being assertive and 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 just aggressive. Know, yeah. So when you are assertive is you are choosing the right time and place. Sometimes you probably, um, and, and choosing the right words to express yourself clearly. When you're aggressive, you're, you're not angry and disrespectful. The, you are, sorry. No. You are angry and disrespectful. You know, you're disrespecting position. You have no respect for the place. So you're all about embarrassing and getting back at. That's aggression. When you are being assertive, you are speaking the truth in a respectful manner, and you are going to choose the time and the place carefully to do so. But I'm not choosing the time to, and place. Yeah, but we don't want to be like that. Because I was just we about to say, the so if the leader is, say for instance, you know, a board meeting, a board meeting, when a business meeting, mm -hmm. in front of the whole church, and you will probably stand up respectfully trying to make your point as a young person. But a leader, how you down in front of the whole church, essentially, they might disrespect you. 
What do yeah. you do? Just sit down and say, ah, oh, let me tell and then dry him one side. I'm not for defend no, myself. No, you respectfully, being assertive, respectfully say, with all due respect, my elder or my pastor or leader, I have a valid point here and I wish to be heard. Yes. I heard you saying so and so, but based on my understanding of whatever this issue is, here is how I, I view it. Yes, and right. um, I would love to be given a chance to, to express speak myself. my express my feeling yeah. and also a chance to be heard. Um, yes, there are some leaders who will not take kindly to a so-called junior person um, responding like that, but that is, that is where the chair comes in. Whoever is chairing the meeting is supposed to now um, follow yeah. the, the, the rules of order and to and to protect the yeah protect the, the member who wants to make a point because the chair have to control the flow and to know that each person's point is is valid and each person's point should be respected so the chair have a lot to do with how God forbid that, if the that, chair that, is that, that person that I was about yeah. to say what if the chair, what yeah. if the chair is the one that is not listening and that is also it's listening. okay to take the lower seat. Um, this is not the forum, and so it's okay for us to take the lower seat instead of embarrassing everybody and ourselves and wait for an opportune time to speak to the person one-on-one. -on -one. And you follow might... the www.jd. Yes. Um, you know, what, what would Jesus, Jesus do in a given scenario? We find Jesus... Um, some Jesus may... tied them tongue, you know. No, some people may think Jesus rude. I mean, Jesus mm -hmm. is, 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 is his adults, his mother. Mother and father came to me and said, son, yeah. where have you been? I just disappear. We were walking two days, going three yeah. days, looking for you. And she, what was just response? Some no, people, was about my father's some people say it was Kurt. And don't you know that I was about my father's business? And mm. Is your mother talking to like that? But um, you see, when the, when the parent um, understands the... The, the avenue or the direction from which the child is coming because Mary knew from the very outset who Jesus was. And so she took it differently. Because remember, Mary, we have both. the angel came. So, so I'm, saying, I'm saying that the leader to whom the youth is responding, if he or she, whoever the leader is at the time, knows who Jesus really is and how he as a leader needs to operate emulating Jesus' um, example, then he or she will respond to the suggestion or the recommendation from the youth in the manner that Jesus would. If, if not, then that person will not be truly representing Christ. And, and remember we're talking about mentorship. So the truth is that a mentor have respect for his, his or her mentee. mentee. Right, and so when the, 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 the young leader, and you don't even have to be too young, much younger, you know, realize that this person really believes in him or her, um, the attitude for towards him, even when his weakness shows, won't um, overpower him, you know, or distract him from learning from his mentor. And, and I think this was Joshua's attitude with Moses. Yes, he knew that Moses had some faults, some weaknesses but he was intent on learning from Moses and he was willing to carry out the instructions that Moses given and this is what I want our young people to know let us not allow the enemy to distract us because in all of this you know the enemy is very present and we have to go and become mature enough to recognize that he's gonna be there trying to discourage you what God wants to get done, you know, trying to interrupt the flow between myself and my mentor. We have to be very conscious of that. And so focus on his strengths or her strengths and be determined that you're going to learn everything that you can learn from him or her, carry out the responsibilities faithfully that have been assigned to you if instructions have been given you. Make sure that you're carrying out, carrying out those instructions and, um, that was one of the things with Joshua. All right, so we want to look at the children of Israel now on the, on the, in Rephidim. 
if you remember that um look quickly glance at what in this again <laughs> Let's they look wanna... at Exodus chapter 7. Is that place? Is that place? Is that place? Is that place? <laughs> <laughs> we figure say one place in about that one that place. Yes. Exodus so, 17. Yes. This is where Moses was, um, Joshua, Aaron, her. So 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 the thing I want to bring out is that Joshua um was chosen um by Moses to lead. It means that as a mentor, you need to recognize the strengths of those you, you are, you are mentoring. Young people in the church, you have a holy for them. And as all the folks in the church, and those, especially those who are in leadership position, we must be able to recognize the gifts and abilities of our young people. And they all don't have the same, you know, but we must be able to recognize them. And, and this is what Moses did. Moses recognized that Joshua was able to lead um rally the troops rally the troops that's the term he was able to rally the troops and so he gave joshua a command in exodus um 17 verse 9 that he must go out there so i think this was where they they had a problem with water they were in the wilderness and they were walking and they were thirsty and all of this and the people started to complain and moses said god me don't know if them people and they're miserable and then they came across the amalek at the Amal Am Amalekites, Amalekites mm -hmm. right? And uh, and and uh, and uh, Moses said to Joshua because he knew that Joshua knew the guys, and he was able to round up the troops and get everybody rallying and joining. And that is a point I want to make: being able to recognize the strengths of the young people that we are leading. Um, we're not dictating to them. We must acknowledge that God has gifted them too. And they have the ability to do some things that um, I can't do as well as they can. Or too old to do now. So they will do it better. So question. How would you or what advice would you give to a mentor? So let me reword. So a mentor sees a specific strength in their mentee. But as a youth... I may not particularly see that for me. What advice would you give to both the mentee um, and the mentor in going about that situation? So for the mentee, accepting that that strength is there and it's for you to you know work on it, and for the mentor to not push it on them but to guide them in such a way to see that that is there. How so would you go about so what we usually say, you, I do, and you watch. You get it right, yeah. Right. And then and then we do it together. together. So you may not feel so comfortable doing a presentation, but the, your mentor see that you know you really have that ability. You you have your you have good oratorial skills, and you know you can bring out some really strong points and whatever. And he said you can, but you don't believe that. And so your mentor is going to sit with you and probably have you help him or her do that prepare that presentation and he or she will probably do it and you are there watching probably moving the slides around and whatever and now and again you probably ask a question and so on and the next time around you and him set up up there and do it you know um that mentor will probably have you doing most of the talking and you don't even realize it you know but he has affirmed you enough and you're now comfortable because he's standing there with you you're not nervous like oh i'm moral nervous support. now you know so he's giving you moral support and all of that <laughs> you know <laughs> and then the next thing he does is what you, Lee, do, it, you do it and you, you watch. do it and he watches you and you know find little you know he'll probably identify some little weaknesses and help you to constructive con criticism. yes mega ah, i just love you guys make some constructive criticisms there and the next time around you you, you do it you better to somebody else and then there you go so then that and is, then that is. and throughout all of that of course you'd be in communication with god because as a mentee you're still nervous as they say and you want to you know go to god and say boy it's going to really help me work on this because i might still be fighting it but if my mentor might see that that strength is there I may have to, you know, go to God and... You know. It's like me. I ask the Lord every single time. Why do you ask people to ask me to speak or do presentations? And say, because I am always nervous to be up there. Hello, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but what what happens is i pray like nothing when i have to do these things because i know that i have to go up there with god that's how it's going to happen i cannot go up there trusting in myself i need to depend on god to help me to do this because i am very nervous you understand so but back to the story at at Rephidim. so moses told him to do that and moses um um got um joshua to go out there and to do this and some there are three things that came out of that story and is the fact that moses you want to read it for me write in my notes moses empowered joshua by delegating some of his authority to him so instead of him taking it over he gave it to joshua recognizing joshua's strength he gave it to to him and this gave joshua the opportunity to choose men to go out there and fight and joshua felt confident that his leader yeah. believed him believed the in right him people. yes that he could do this you know but sometimes as leaders we, we need to stop hug, hug up all of the responsibility you know we need to, to delegate him to get all the praise, praise all the, the accolades and say oh is is pastor blind did that you know is elder so and so do it when in fact there are other people that you could have empowered to get it done and as a team you do it together and nobody needs to get the praise actually it's all to god you know so delegating authority and that is exactly what moses did with joshua and as mentors we need to remember that you know that we want our young people to feel valued they have something to offer they too when god um, um gave gifts and talents they were for the administration for the church ashton abigail can sing and they can both do soprano but it is true that your both your soprano may be different from Abigail and will give the song a new, you know, a different sound, you know. But it's not that you can't sing. Both of you can do well with soprano. And we need to acknowledge that in our young people too. So yes, I have years of experience, but does that mean that the younger person who don't have fresh, as much experience as I eyes. can't do can't do as well? And they are more inclined and in tune with what is happening in our society now. So they are better able to pick out some things. I am me alone doing too much talking. Um, the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let the other thing that came out of the story, uh, uh with Refidim, was team, teamwork, teamwork. So, what you remember the story? So the the fight was going on. Who was on the battlefield? Joshua and the men of Israel. Yeah. So Joshua and the and men Moses that he chose were out the there. And Moses Moses went up on the hill. What he went up there to do? Watch. To I'm give here. moral support. Yes, and he was also oh, up there the praying. And after the time when and it up on air, yeah. and yeah. up the ah, So Moses oh, went up on the hill yeah, to watch the battle story. down there. But he wasn't just standing up and watching Joshua and he said, <laughs> You know, yeah, you, me would do it that way. Then, no, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, him. no. Jo Moses was up there, and he was doing something very important. He was up there praying. Now, some people will say praying. How about that? In I help Joshua, but he was actually helping Joshua, and he had his hands up. And Scripture says that as long as his hands were up, yeah, they, they were winning in the battle. The thing, though, is that after you hold up your hands so I long, am. I you know young. Hmm. Uh, Moses was not Those arms got tired. But there was her on one side and there was Aaron on the other side. And they gave Moses a rock or something to sit mm. on. And while when he was tired and he sat on it and they held one held up the other and when his hands were and, and as long as that happened, you had victory. victory. And that is the thing about mentorship. It's not about me doing everything and me leading and me dictating what you do and you doing what I tell. It's team effort. Acknowledging the different abilities that we each have. Joshua was the war man. You know, so he was down there doing the war thing. You know, and uh, Moses was a prayer warrior. And you see, it just goes to show as well, the young person 
because they are so in tune with what's happening now, they can be more in the battlefield. And they have more strength. Yeah. And they, they you know the mentors. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and and help. Yeah. And pray. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So he was down there. So you have to contextualize it, Abigail. How do we apply it to the church as we know it today? Put the young people on the pulpit. No, I have a thing, you know. So because one other thing. Point of preaching, Sabbath. Me no young. No, but one of the things, one of the things that I always say, and Daddy will tell you that I say, why when, for example, in nominating committee sits, why is it that no young people? The the election is over now. Pure old people. Pure old. A leader department. What happened to the mentorship? There's a church in Kingston that I, I really love. I won't call the name. But you see the young people up front leading. They are the heads of departments. And I wish more churches would model this. Because the truth is, the older folks don't need to leave, you know. Moses was on the battlefield. He was right there. Supporting, supporting the young man who was leading out in the battle. Supporting the young man who is leading the personal ministries team. Supporting the young lady who is leading out in Sabbath school as the departmental director. But there is that mentor. We're talking about I watch and you do. Standing beside to give guidance. Based, because I want to say this. Do not undermine experience. Experience is invaluable, right? And so there are, there they are, supporting the, the the work of the church while we allow the younger folks. Because, like I learned in Germany, and I I continue to say, leadership. We always say the youths are the leaders for tomorrow. That is so wrong, so not true. They are the leaders today, and we need to give them the opportunities to lead. For Christ's sake, elect them as leaders for the department. Some of them are them born at the church. The reality you know? is a lot of them are, when you ask them, they decline. They are intimidated or they are timid. So I mentorship. think before you can elect them to be the head, there should be a mentorship program. There, make so them you begin by saying this year, Elder John, 90 year old, is the elder, but we have a young 20 year old um, brother He's Jones mentoring him so that next election, next year, brother Jones can be the one out front. Because a lot of people sometimes ask them to do things and they refuse. And it's not just because they just don't want to be, but they feel they that feel if they go up there, they're not competent and people will laugh at them and that type of thing. So, and in them Israel, you have that. Prepare them. And then you put them out there. And that is what we are talking about. But the fact is, if you just take their no and leave it like that, they'll never come out. So you need to affirm them, believe in them. On that hill, you had the different persons doing different things. And at the end of the day, they won the battle against the Amalekites. And not everybody was running up and down with a sword and a shield, right? But they were all doing something very important that contributes to the victory. But that's what that what the Ephes Ephesians and that was said the, the um the different in parts of the body. Corinth. 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 Yes. Corinth yes. Right. So you have yes. the you have the and you have the foot we all play a part. So oh. they have crusade, you have the prayer team run a back a prayer. You have the Bible work a goes not the field not the sun art. You have the people we are cook the soup run a back. Everybody play a part and all we work together to make the two or three people baptized. And I just love this. Um, the epiglottis mm -hmm. that nobody can see is a part of the body. And some, <laughs> not all of us are upfront people. Are you a ruler? Yes, <laughs> miss. Oh, you know what some is? But you that, were asking earlier on The epiglottis is at the back there. Mm -hmm. And we <laughs> <don't> drink. <laughs> and it flop over and cover the thing So that you don't choke when you're drinking, yeah? Not when we do choke. You're well, wait, wait, wait. When someone else drinks soup. You were asking earlier on to bring back to the point um, <laughs> about examples in the Bible of youth um, and how they took on leadership and, and benefited the, the whole. The whole. And a good example that comes to mind is, is in the book of Daniel. Because those four Hebrew boys, they were youths. They were teenagers 
when they were taken captive into and, captivity. They, and went down to, to, to Babylon. And those soothsayers and those so-called wise men, they were the gray hair <laughs> men who went to Harvard and yeah, Harvard. and NCU. And, and, no, not NCU. They didn't go to NCU. No, they went to Columbia State and <laughs> Harvard and just UTEC and they, the gray hair people and they, when Nebuchadnezzar... They had the permanent damage. Mm. Yeah, they had a PhD. Okay. Permanent <laughs> damage. Oh, when, uh, I didn't know that one. Really? No. Oh, really? Oh, well, well, what should I say? You mean to say you're trying to get that? No, <laughs> no it's a demon I'm doing. Sorry. <laughs> Don't mix me up. It's a demon I'm doing. Censorship. Yeah, but they, they, they couldn't match out the thing. And the, the, young, the young men um, were the ones who were able to step in and provide provide leadership. And uh, we recall as a story when that Daniel was appointed the chief yeah. over all the the other counselors, you know, like the MPs. He was the and he chief. He was one of the youngest. He was the chief of them. He and he was among the youngest. Um, so when the older ones couldn't provide the guidance and the information that leadership demanded the youth was there to step in and, and did, an, did an excellent job with God's, God's leading so don't underestimate the power of a youth who is led by and that the leads Lord. me to the point that it's so important that as leaders we don't just talk you know sometimes we talk a lot but our lives co contradict what we say and we forget that our young people are watching, watching and listening as well and so moses was the perfect example for joshua joshua saw in moses one who was seriously connected to to the god he served and so when moses decided to send joshua out there joshua didn't say boy i kill him i try to kill me you know he knew that moses was connected to god and must have gotten this directive from God to allow Joshua to lead in this way, you know, to win the battle. And so he trusted Moses' God, who was also his God, you know, and that helped to strengthen his faith. And as leaders, we need to, to remember that our young people are watching us. And it's one thing to be able to quote scripture. It's another thing to live it. You know, it's another thing to for them to see that we are truly connected and we're not just going by our whims and fancies or our experience. I've been doing this for years. I've been at this for the, you know, we're not just doing that. They hear us praying. They hear us asking God for direction. They see God answering our prayers and they come to know that God too. And as a result, um, their, their relationship with God is built up and that's a part of mentorship and Moses did that perfectly for Joshua now we're moving on to Moses on Mount Sinai right and the, the point that I want to make here is that at Sinai the Lord called Moses to go up to the mountain and receive the tablets of stone and we know when you when you go and read it Moses went there and learned everything about the sanctuary he spent 40 days and four tonight's up and in that favorite mountain. number that? <laughs> no but the thing that struck me is that mo joshua went with him joshua went to the man that joshua didn't leave him up there joshua stayed with moses up on that mountain for the 40 days and 40 night and and Joshua was able to experience the glory of God because he saw that glory on Moses' face. You know, that's quite an experience to have as a young person. And, and, and um, as, as, as leaders, we need to allow our young people to experience that. You know, um, our fasting and prayers, our meetings, to see have them see that God is truly leading us as leaders right that we really have a connection and and what it does is builds their respect you know they come to have 
um, greater respect, greater acceptance of God's call on their lives and what God truly wants to accomplish in and through them because they see how God is leading in your life. So Moses, and you know, and the thing, the sad thing was that when they were coming down the mountain, well, you know how that went. Mm -hmm. And Joshua was able to experience Moses' uh, bro break, heartbreak. heartbreak. Mm -hmm. You know, because here he was up there communing with God, getting directions from God as to how to, you know, lead the people. And here they were, um, disobeying God. Um, I'm closing. And I want to say that Moses affirms Joshua. And I'll probably just read this. It says that Moses, God's chosen deliverer, deliverer marched millions of Jews across the sandy desert from slavery to freedom. And then Moses took young Joshua and prepared him to lead the Jews across the Jordan into the promised land. Moses instilled confidence and vision in Joshua. When you read Numbers 13, it details the account of the Israelite spies reporting their findings to Joshua on the feasibility of defeating inhabitants of the promised land. And only Caleb and Joshua declared that the conquest of Canaan was doable. That they preached at sermon last week, you know. They didn't see, even though they saw everything else that the, the other ten saw, they didn't focus on that, you know. They focus on the fact That's that God had told them this that theirs. this is theirs and they were going to claim it. But the part that I like is that before Joshua was sent to search out Canaan, his name was Hoshe, the Hebrew word for salvation. But after the demonstration of faith and passion that is exhibited in Numbers 14, 6 to 9, Moses changed Joshua's name. Them can't just be so. poor, easy to say that. <laughs> it, 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 Moses what? gave him a new name and he called it Joshua. In and in Hebrew, it means Yahweh is my salvation. So Moses renamed Joshua and affirmed him in his calling to follow him as Israel's leader. And so, so Moses was confident that this young man is the, one. is the one, that he was learning from him, that he was listening to God because he stood up and Moses went down there, Joshua, sorry, and Caleb went down there with the other 10 and he stood up and when they came back and was complaining, he said, listen, man, all of this is so, but we can go and, what did he say, daddy? We are able to conquer We are it. able to conquer it right and so in closing i want to ask a question i'm gonna skip all of this <laughs> says the what's your name the epic losses me, me. yes <laughs> so in closing our youth are leaders today now and as leaders we need to show them support and respect like we are not perfect neither are they but god who knows them has chosen called and purposed them by equipping them with abilities, gifts, and talents that he wants to use in his service. He needs us to stand with them and to stand for them as he used them um, to train and prepare them to pass, to take the baton. Because we as leaders, older ones, we are passing the baton. And God is wants them. The divide. <laughs> so God is looking for an intergenerational movement of people willing to work side by side to reach out to others. Not a leader who will just train our youth and send them on their own. I remember Gary Blanchard said, remember, it is pass it on and not dump it on. Right? God wants the adults in the church to be leader makers. Um, we need each other. Young people are not afraid of danger we must know that they're very brave they're very bold they need just affirmation just like moses affirmed joshua and gave him this great role um god wants us to do that and be supportive as daddy said when he was describing the old mentorship thing young people are arrows in the hand of a mighty man and we read that in the text young people are designed to live dangerously and if we don't lead them dangerously for the lord then the devil will we know this this is what Gary Blanchard mm -hmm. said in the magazine that I read. And he said, this is documented in the, 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 the congress I went to in 2019. Leading dangerously means being willing to show the same courage that Joshua had when the Lord promised that he would be with him wherever he went. And that I skipped out, but God made that promise to Joshua. When Moses died, 
when Moses died, God made the promise to Joshua that wherever you go, I will go and I will never leave you nor forsake you. So here are my questions. How are you should be able to easily list some people that they have encountered during their journey at church in their life who have accepted them, affirmed them, and respect them? And as leaders, I want you to ask this question. Are you, so am I such a person? Can our young people in our churches, and I'm talking churches, but elsewhere in society, can they say that we are the persons that they can depend on as they walk with us? Because we have shown them acceptance. We have been affirming them and we're showing respect for them. We're not um, cowing them down and every suggestion they make, we, we wipe it off with erase and say, no, 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 this is the way you must do it. This is the way you must do it. Are we doing that? Are we, are, are we affirming them and saying, that's a good idea. We can work with it. And you know, gently you may tweak it a little, but you have not thrown it out. You know, young people need those kind of people around them. They should be able to confidently and proudly state all their, your kindness made them feel as youth and prospective leaders. And unfortunately, a young, lot of young people can't say that about some of the leaders in the church. Abigail started out by saying that they go around the back to talk about what they're so, wearing so, so, so. and so, 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 and what they saw them doing during the course of the week, you know, that sort of thing, and forget that they are young people who have many, of, many of them are struggling and what they need is more affirmation and encouragement and support. What are some things they have been able to accomplish because of the encouragement that you are giving to them? Are young people able to say, boy, Pastor Blight, he was always there to help me fix up that sermon. You know, in, in edit it and say, all right, use this scripture text or use this example instead. You know, you know, you did very well last week. I can tell you to add one more thing to that sermon the next time you're going to preach it, you know, and make it an even more powerful sermon than you than it was this time around. Young people must be able to point at leaders that are walking alongside them and say these things. What do your youth begin to own? When do your youth begin to own their own faith? And Joshua was able to do that while he was walking with Moses. Mm -hmm. You know, he was able, when he was sitting up there on the mountain with Moses for 40 days and 40 nights, he began to, he began to understand even more um, deeply what a relationship with Christ is all about. He understand the importance of the voice of God making the difference, spending time connecting with God. And, and young people, when they see us do that, you know, they learn from us. When we sit with them and do that. Um, have you prayed about the topic of the AY program that you want to present? You know, and walk them through strategies and approaches that they can use. It's them talking and you're just supporting them as they make plans for these. As we have benefited speaking to our young people now, Others should also. So you and I are benefiting from leaders in our churches. Um, they are helping us to grow, to become more confident and firmer in our relationship with the Lord. Are you prepared to do that to another young person? Because you don't have to be old to be a leader, right? And there is always someone there who you can mentor. Um, someone who is struggling and you know, they're not coming to church as often. But you know they are talented. You know, what can you do to help to strengthen that young person um, out there? You don't need to be an old man or an old man to mentor them. And it's important that as you have benefited, that you try to help others to benefit. So who are some young Christians that you can encourage? Look for their strengths. Look for the strengths in their lives. Look for their talents that you know they're not using often enough in church, but you know they have it. They are great planners. Invite them to be a part of a committee, um, you know, to plan activities for young people and others in the church. Um, look for those. Tell them like Moses did with Joshua. Affirm them of their worth. Trust them. That's what Moses did when he sent Joshua out there on the field and allow him but he was right there with him 
holding up his hands in prayer. Let's not undermine the power of prayer and how it can change lives and change the leadership team and enhance our goals, our strategies, our approach to leading at whatever stage we are leading it. Don't have to be in church, it could be elsewhere. And that's my little bit. I chatted a lot and I wish I was getting more support in the chatter. <laughs> We will get in the discussion. Yes. Ably. And we all did our part. Yeah, that's right. Well, well, anything and we you thank guys you for your part add? as well. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Just to say, just to concur that it is, it is now that we need to mentor our young people and not wait until when we as older leaders are off the sea because then they will not benefit from our knowledge so whilst we are still at it we need to pull some young person under our wings and mentor them so that the work can continue seamlessly seamlessly and always remember that youths have a lot of resources a lot of talents God has given to every single person gifts, abilities, and talents. So never underestimate or undermine that which God has given to our young people. And I can't help but say, none of us are perfect. Let me say that again. None of us are perfect. And as you heard, Moses wasn't. Huh? And Joshua knew this. But he didn't focus on it our young people are not perfect just as we are not and sometimes we need to just stop focusing on their weak points and maybe if we focus on their strengths more they will be empowered to let go of some of the things that they are struggling with you know but sometimes we keep harping on their mistakes and highlighting them and they're they, they, they feel demotivated they don't want to come to church as daddy said they don't want to participate you know because they are not feeling our support we are not affirming them so yes they are struggling and yes they are making some some mistakes out there but please let's not chase them out of the church you know Let's encourage them to use the gifts and the talents that God has given to them because he really wants to go with a lot with them. And yes, so maybe epigotis, you may have to do a lot um, to encourage them to work behind the scenes. And nowadays they have media, the media room. Some of them are very good with the camera. Some are very good with the comment section of the social media platforms or whatever. But find those gifts and affirm and support them as they work even as epiglottis behind the scenes you kind of took the point that you know my my closing point in terms of not focusing on the negative side but just to add to that we're not saying that you should completely ignore when we are making mistakes or you know no we're not yeah we're, we're, we're not saying that you should ignore them and this is this is a point that i if you follow me on all my social medias you know that this is this is my point um we don't want you to completely ignore the fact that we are we are not perfect you know we know we're not perfect we know we're making mistakes we don't know the bible from genesis to revelation a lot of us haven't else. even read the bible from genesis to revelation but when it is that you are correcting us, remember to correct us. In love. In love. There you go. There you go. In love. I remember years ago, I won't name the place, but there's this young lady. It was church. And I watched her skirt getting shorter. <laughs> you know, and I remember one day I was passing her. And I said, why you want to make them stop rub you? <laughs> And I, and I just run my hand and on her leg. I said, why you won't let them stop rub you? You mm. know, see that they're paying too much for a piece of little. fabric. <laughs> said, what is it, Auntie Charmin? I said, you heard me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I just look at her. And I watched that skirt length. Bro. I never rebuke her. She or she decided that she's going to claim what she paid for. Mm. And she, I watched the skirt length yeah. change. You know and, and and we can do it more lovingly you know and and some the truth is that sometimes when we love people hard enough they will change 
they will see. And that's what God does, you know. God loves us so much. And as we connect to him closer and closer, we realize that we want to change some things so we can look more like and sound more like him. And if our leaders would do that, you know, they would be amazed at the changes that we see in our young people. You have any final thoughts? No? No final thoughts? Alright. So. Give him final thoughts already. You and you know. everybody can chat like you. 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 You come like well, a friend or, or a preacher. I'm done. No, nah, I'm yeah. done. Yeah, that's my friend. I'm done. He knows. But thank you so much for listening. I'm hoping all the chatter you were able to pick something useful out of it that you can apply to your own life as a leader or as a young, as person, a young person you know um to sympathize with the older folks so sometimes they don't even know that they're doing some harm in the way they do and encourage them to be better mentors and you strive to become a mentor because god wants to use all of us to bring in the sheaves Anyways, thanks so much for watching again, beauties. We hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. I think this is the perfect end to our unintentional mini series. Mm. <laughs> was very unintentional, it's but the way it was. It turned a mini series. Leon <laughs> made it into a mini series, <laughs> but it was impactful. Yes, so yes. you know, the Holy Spirit led, it. and we wherever He leads, we go. So thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you have a wonderful Sabbath, whether you go home, find a new home, or you worship from home. There you Whatever go. the case may be, have a blessed Sabbath. Remember, Jesus loves you. So go out and live like live it. Live like it. Bye, Bye. beauty. Happy Sabbath. Feliz Sabado. <laughs>